Oftentimes I am saddened or angered or annoyed that justice is not being done. I love justice. I love truth. I'm a criminal justice major, and I got in that because I love politics. I love to see that, you know, if someone did something wrong, they get served with a sentence. But how many people know that in order to get justice, there has to be truth? In order for someone to get convicted, the truth has to be told. Right? right? So if we're going to be a cornerstone, which is the strongest point in the wall, that upholds this this wall, this spiritual house, this spiritual church here. Because remember, we are each the church. It's not this building, but it's us. Then we have to make sure that we are separating the truth from opinion. Lisa Bevere says, truth has a name. Truth is not a river that changes with cultural currents, but a rock and the cornerstone. So truth is not what is truth, but who is truth. Because truth has a name. Jesus says he is the truth, the way, and the life, right? So the church is to be built on a rock, sturdy, unmovable, unchanging. Yet we have Christians always changing the rules, always becoming movable, always from like a, a sea, like a wave being tossed to and fro, never receiving the blessings of the Lord, right? And I, I call this a Walmart Christian. A Walmart, why a Walmart? Because in Walmart, you could get anything. You know, you go in one aisle, you get some broccoli. You go in one aisle, you get a magazine. You go in one aisle, you get the Bible. In one aisle, you get condoms. You could just get whatever you want at Walmart, right? So these are people who want to be Walmart Christians. It's whatever, whatever pleases you, whatever you want. Ask your neighbor, do you want to be a cornerstone or a stumbling stone? This is going to be a choice that you each individually would have to make. It's going to be a choice that you may have to think long and hard, or some people may say, you know what, I know what I want to do. It may be a choice that's not popular, but it's going to make you influential. Popular means common, or as in terms of nowadays, basic. Okay? But influential means powerful. And I asked my husband, I said, what's the opposite of basic? <laughs> Lit. Okay? So do you want to be basic or lit? I don't know if I'm using that right, but whatever. <laughs> it's a choice. Which one do you want to be? So here are some areas that I think we need to know, that we need to be in truth about here, um, and that the, oftentimes it becomes gray. It becomes maybes. It becomes I don't knows. Oftentimes it becomes just rants and raves. But here are some areas that we need to be in truth. So this is a Bible study, so I want to make this like a game, okay? So I'm going to say something, and then as I'm going to say true or false. If you think it's true, you're going to raise your hand. When I say it's false, you're going to raise your hand, okay? All right. So God is love. True or false? Raise your hand if you think it's true. God is love. Raise your hand if you think that's true, okay? If you think it's false, raise your hand. Okay, good job. Everyone got it here right, okay? God is love. Now, if God is love, love is God. True or false? If you say true, raise your hand. If you say false, raise your hand. Okay. This is good. Maybe, maybe. Not so sure, right? Oftentimes, I thought it was God is love, so love is God, right? It's the same thing, right? Wrong. False. It's not the same thing. And this is what has gotten so compromised in the world today, so distorted, because we put God is love. Yes, God is love. And the Bible says he is love because that is God. And if we get to know the character of God, we'll know what love is. But when we say love is God, we're putting our own measure of what love is to God. Our version, our definition of love will never measure up to God. People hold what they've received in life as love. People say love is hurtful. Love is painful. Love is this crying. You get back together and you separate. Get back together. That's not love. That's emotions. That's hurt. That's flesh. That's, that's the enemy coming in and making division. That's not love. So if you want to know what love is, get to know the character of God. And that's where you will find your answer about what love is. 
Here goes the next one. God hates or does not hate? Because remember, God is love. So if you say, it's true, God hates, raise your hand. Okay, if you say, God does not hate, false, raise your hand. Okay, some people are like, I don't know, I'm not going to raise my hand. It's okay. Yes, God does hate. He loves because he loves people, but he does not love everything. There are six things in the Bible speaks about that he hates. If you go to Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, I'm reading it from the Passion Translation. There are six evil God truly hates and a seventh that is an abomination to him. Putting others down while considering yourself superior. Spreading lies and rumors. Spilling the blood of the innocent. Plotting evil in your heart toward another. Gloating over doing what's plainly wrong, spouting lies and false testimony, and stirring up strife between friends. These are entirely despicable to God. Now, didn't I say things get a little gray, right, after you walk the walk for a little bit? Because you know what? When you first get saved, guess what? We're so on fire, We're just like telling everyone about Jesus, and there's nothing that can bring us down. But then we walk in reality, walk in this world, this fallen world for a little bit, six months, a year, year and a half, two years. And then it's like, oh, I can't stand her. She's so annoying. Did you see what she did the other day? Did you see what she was wearing? Did you see this? All of a sudden, our mouths just start going. And like the Bible says, where there is too much talk, gossip is not absent. So I'm sure there's gossiping, there's murmuring, there's spouting lies and false testimony. You're spreading lies and rumors, putting others down while considering yourself better. So now we're all of a sudden here in this gray area where we're doing the very things that God hates, yet we're saying we love God. Where did things go wrong? And I don't know this is I don't know if this is opinion or what, but you know, my opinion, I think this is fact that God hates Facebook. Right? <laughs> and Facebook, you can see whatever you want to see. You don't got to church go to church, you don't got to leave the house. You can see the news, you can see what happened in someone's house the other day, you can see what they're wearing. You can see what happened at someone's service the week prior. You can see what what someone's doing better than this person. You'll see the gossip that's going on between this group. You'll see this person backbiting this person, this indirect going over here to this person. All on Facebook. And yet, some Christians say, I go on Facebook because I want to win the lost. Well, really? Because the lost are looking at Facebook and they're saying, I don't want any part of that. So how can we do something and say we're, we're being an outreach? We're, we're, we're pouring into people. We're making blogs. We're doing godly blogs. And, you know, we're winning people. But guess what? Sometimes those blogs are great, but they're nothing but opinions. And in this culture, I don't want to be a culture of opinions, but I want this to be a culture where God's word is superior, where God's word is what we go on, where God's word is really our back, is our source, saying, you know what? Let me look this up. I'm not going to look in the dictionary. Let me look in what God's word says. Hmm. So everyone's here, you know, we have people on Facebook not anyone here. No one look around. It's none of you guys, okay? I promise. People on, on Facebook, Christians, saying, what are your thoughts on abortion? What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on tithing? Well, did you see what pastor so-and-so from this mega church was doing? Do you think that was right or wrong? Do you think Kanye is really saved? That's just to make sure I'm, I'm going okay. All right. So you see all this on Facebook. You think that that's God? I don't think so. I don't think God would have you put out what you think is right and wrong in your own book of myself. We want to be a we want to go on Facebook and we want to slam people who say this about this and this about that. And these are not even safe people about homosexuality, about abortion. But sometimes we have to step back and say, you know what? How do we expect these people? Like, what do more do we expect from them? They're not saved. 
And then we have to also think about what is the murder that's going on in my heart that I need to get rid of first before coming to this person. You see? You're, you're saying in your seats, okay, we talked about cornerstone. Now you're on Facebook. What are you talking about? Well, don't worry. This all ties in. Because if you want to be a cornerstone, you've got to be strong. You've got to be unmovable. You've got to have the truth and be unshaken. So now I lost my own self. So, so you see all this going on in Facebook, right? But you've got to also look at yourself. Look at that, that little wedge that's in your eye before you start trying to take it out of your neighbors, right? We also see people blasting pastors. When in Genesis, I th- I, when I seen this, I thought, man, it brought me back to Genesis 9.23 when it says, but Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father naked. This was talking about Noah, the, how his sons covered him. They didn't put him out on blast that, oh, he's drunk or, oh, he's naked. No, they didn't put him out on blast. They didn't put that on Facebook. Nowadays, you would have seen it live, streaming live. If we're to worship God, we're to worship God in spirit and in truth. But you cannot worship God without knowing the truth. So this is going back to First Peter uh, chapter 2. Verse 4. Well, actually, this is verse 8. I'm sorry. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So that's us, right? We're going to be cornerstones. We're making a decision tonight to be cornerstones because God is hovering over us right now to make decisions, to make black and white so he could do something, right? And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall, they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. So this right here is what I'm talking about. Don't be a stumbling stone. Don't be the person on Facebook that's doing a, being a stumbling stone instead of being a cornerstone, proclaiming God's truth over your own opinion. We as Christians think we know it all, so we give out our advice, our opinions, our own theology, But doesn't the Bible say to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding? Yet we are being our own. And instead of being a living stone and a cornerstone, we're being stumbling blocks. Unfortunately, this is Christianity today. We need to get back to being the cornerstone. We need to get back to the truth. So often, instead of so often swaying further and further and further, further, further from what's black and white, and we end up in this gray puddle, we need to stay right here. Unmovable, unshakable on the word of God. I want to leave you guys here with question. What are some areas that truth has become fluid in your life? What are some areas that were once, this is the truth, this is solid, this is where I'm standing on. But now it's become, "Mm, it may be okay. It may be okay to be transgender. It may be okay to say anybody can get married. It may be okay. So I'm going to just step away from this one. How many people know here that not addressing something is basically giving the okay to it. Now, I'm not saying to make a comment about everything because, of course, a lot of non-Christians know us as, know us for our politics, know us for, you know, sometimes being rude on Facebook, being nasty towards people. But what I'm saying is that We need to get back to the word of God where the truth is there. It's all, it's, it's a playbook, you know, it's our building blocks. It tells us what is true, what is not true, what is false. It tells us, and I mean, I'm speaking to myself. I need to get back to that place where I say, you know what? I'm going to run to that word first instead of what I think because You know, I could think a lot of things, and it doesn't even matter. 
because we need to be a cornerstone, not just for us, because we're building up our spiritual houses, but we need to be a cornerstone for the world. We're living in a fallen world, and they're looking for something that's solid. They're looking for something that's real, and we have the answers inside of us. Some people are embarrassed to say, I'm a Christian. They're embarrassed to say that I go to so-and-so's church. But we should never be ashamed of Jesus. I actually had an encounter, and I'm about to close up. I actually had an encounter the other day. And uh, they, a coworker of mine had seen a post from the women's uh, conference. And she went around the job saying, Oh my gosh, Lorna, she's, you know, she's talking, she must be a pastor or something. And so, of course, you know, word gets around fast, you know. And uh, I go to work and they come up to me and they go, are, are you a pastor? And I said, no, my name is Lorna. Um, I'm a wife of a pastor. And I said, okay. And another person, hey, um, so I kind of seen something. And by the way, just give us some background. This girl is who I work with often. I like her. Like, she's my buddy. You know, I mess with her a lot. I sing all the time and at my job. And she's like, I like that you're weird. <laughs> I said, thank you. So she comes up to me the other day, and she goes, hey, you know, I heard something. I'm like, what did you hear? She's like, um, are you like a pastor or something? And by the way, She's gay, right? So I go, no. I was like, I'm the same person that you met a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago. I said, but I am a wife to a pastor. She's like, oh, okay. She's like, I know. You probably hate me. And I said, what? I said, girl, I said, I love you. I said, you know I love you. I was like, I'm always talking with you, messing with you. I was like, don't do that. So then like 10 minutes goes by. She's kind of awkward. And I was like, hey, you know, if there's anything that I did to offend you, can you please tell me? She's like, no, 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 no. She's like, it's just I'm having a bad day. I was like, well, come here. Give me a hug. We hugged it out. And I said, I love you. All right, nothing's changed. She's like, okay. But I had to reassure her. You know why? Because Christians have such a bad view. Not believers have such a bad view on Christians. They think we're going to bash them. We think we're going to send them automatically to hell. They think we're going to just... Go rampant on them. And that's not the case at all because guess what? If you go back to God's word, God is love, right? He loves everything, everyone, just not everything, right? So he loves her even more than I love her. He just doesn't love the things that she does. But how many times did God not love the things that we were doing, right? But he hovered over us. He hovered over me when I was dark and void and desolate, right? When I didn't even know the truth, when I was still walking in my darkness and doing my dirt, he still hovered. He never left. He never said, oh, poor Lorna. Oh, poor Earth. Too bad I couldn't help. No, he hovered. He hovered and he put his face there, right? And he waited for something that he was about to do. So I just want to say, visit those areas tonight when you have a chance. Think about some of those areas that maybe have become gray over some time. Think about those areas that God wants to separate the light from the darkness where he's hovering right now and he's waiting to do something on your behalf. Some of you in here are waiting for a miracle. Some of you are waiting for an unanswered prayer. But maybe also tied in with that is saying, God saying, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you so I could do something. I'm not done working in you. I'm not done blessing you. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what they said. Those are all opinions. Those are all lies. I've got the truth right here. Every eye and head bowed in this room. Lord, we just give you every piece of us tonight. We give over every great area in our heart to you tonight, Daddy God. We say, let you be God over it. 
Lord, every area that you've been hovering, that you've been waiting to do something, oh God, do it now in the name of Jesus, Daddy God. Do it now on behalf of my brother, on behalf of my sister, oh God. Do it now, oh God. Make those crooked paths straight, oh God. Make those gray areas black and white. Separate us, oh God. Separate us, clean us. Purify our hearts, purify our minds, oh God. Give us clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. For that, Lord, you love, Daddy God. You love the pure heart. So I just thank you right now, Daddy God, that you're not done doing something in our lives. I think you're always waiting us to take us from glory to glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's uh, stand. Let's stand. Hallelujah. How many were blessed? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. Appreciate the word. Appreciate the Bible study. One of the things that we are going to continue to do, that we are going to continue.